Curry, Mr. Bejeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. As I had mentioned to you, you can stay home for a long time as long as home is safe. But the question is, how do you make home safe? Well, I met Carol DiRienzo oh, a year ago, maybe a year ago, um, and, and heard about her because Carol is a nurse whose husband is a contractor. And they decided, but her focus in nursing had been with working with elders, so they decided to actually start a business helping people figure out how to make their home safe. Um, now, when I hear about adapting your home to make it safe, what I think is, oh, you mean like a ramp? And it kind of like ends there, right? Um, so Carol taught me that it doesn't end there. So I want you to just listen to Carol and think about how this might apply to your house. If you or someone that you love were living in the house, was, you were seeing those kinds of early stages of dementia, how do you prepare for that? Because among other things, you don't want to fall down. I always tell people, you can old, be old, you can stay at home for a long time, but don't fall, right? We well, you know where that goes, and it's one directional. So li just listen to this and think about how this might apply to you. Carol, how did Frank and Mary deal with their house? Thank you very much, Arthur, and thank you for having me. I'm not going to talk today about the really big modifications you can do to your home, but some things that you can do to help you stay safe at home. And there's two books that I refer to. One is put out by the NIH, and one is put out by the Alzheimer's Association. And they talk about home safety. And I'll pass them around. And um, Cable nicely offered to put them on as well. Yeah, if you can just put the sites on them, if we can add that as like a line on the, to, the web, to, the, to the show, that would so be we're great. Gonna talk, sorry, Ron. We're going to talk about some general tips to make your home safe. And when you think safety, first thing you think of is prevention. How do you adapt the environment? to minimize the danger. So there's really basically four elements that we talk about. Simplify, label, secure, and modify. So we talk about simplify, and I bring this up every time my daughter kills me for it, but my daughter's bedroom back in the day. If you woke up with Alzheimer's in my daughter's bedroom, what would happen is you would just close your eyes and say, please take me out of here, because it's a cluttered mess. And clutter is very, very <coughs> unnerving to somebody with dementia. So we say simplify. How do you simplify? Start by removing the clutter. Keep your pathways clear to get from one point to the other. Remove scatter rugs. I talk about scatter rugs often. They're very quick and easy to trip on. Remove or cover mirrors. A person with dementia, when they see their reflection in a mirror, it frightens them. They don't know who that is. So we recommend that you take them away or cover them. Remove portable space heaters and fans. They don't remember what they were for, they can get injured on them. We tell you to remove portable plants, um, poisonous plants, excuse me. I talk about a client I had who had a beautiful garden. She was an avid, avid gardener. She grew all the types of foods that you could eat. And one day she had a plant in her home which was not edible, thinking she was in her garden. She took it, she ate it. Poison control came in and um, took care of it, but still, it's something that we tell you to, to remove. Arthur always provides me a wonderful, um, <laughs> what do you, trippable surface, electrical cords. They are the, one of the number one tripping <laughs> surfaces out there. We tell you to either tape them to the ground or get them off. Make them short. Do not have them in your pathways because they're very, very easy to trip on, and I have done it before. Um, fish tanks. Pet cages, another thing that, that somebody with dementia does not remember what that cute little thing is that's swimming up and around and may put their hand in and try to eat it, try to capture it, think they're going fishing, you can name it. Um, and then we also tell you to remove things such as artificial fruit or fruit magnets because somebody with dementia will see a piece of fruit, it will trigger in their mind, okay, that's something I can eat and pick it up and try to eat it and if it's wax or, or some other plastic product, they could get injured. We move to labeling. This is a great example of um, what you can do in your bedroom to label where everything is. Some of the other things to, that we talk about labeling for. Buy your phone, have a card that has all the emergency numbers, your home address, and your name. We also recommend using a photo phone because while somebody with dementia may not recognize whose face that is, 
they may recognize that, okay, that's somebody, if I call that number, that's somebody who can help me. Um, the big red uh, cross sign, that's emergency. They do, that will trigger back in the day. That's an emergency. If I press that number, it'll get me to somebody who can help me. We also recommend that you put an answering machine on your home phone to have it be very minimized of the ring and very minimized of the sound because you do not want somebody with dementia answering that phone because they won't be able to take the message so you'll never get it and it may be somebody who's trying to, to solicit and you do not need a new roof if you don't want a new roof. We also tell you um, to label the contents of cabinets, closets and drawers that somebody can go to. Where are the spoons? Where are the cups? Where are things of that nature? And label rooms that they are allowed to go into, such as the bathroom door. We'll talk more, talk more about doors in a minute. But we'll put a stop sign. Um, Sandy was saying put the big black rug in front of it. They'll think it's a, it, it's, a, it's a hole. Also put a stop sign. They do remember what stop is. Stop. I can't go in there. And again, place a no soliciting sign also outside at your front door. How do you keep it secure and what do you do to modify? Doors. Your front door or your side door or whichever door you go out, we tell you or we recommend to you to place a lock either very high or in my case, because I'm short, very low, with a key that is either is, is hidden right nearby the door so that you can get out. But somebody with Alzheimer's will go to this lock but won't know that there's one up or one down. We also recommend that you put a key outside because you may get locked out and this way you can get back in. Um, we also, this is a wonderful time of year, I tell everybody, because sleigh bells are prolific in every store that you go to, starting back in June. But what a sleigh bell, you can hang it on your door. It makes a very pretty sound, but it also alerts you when somebody's walking out the door. Uh, talked about doors before in the big black hole. We also tell you, paint your door, the same color as your wall for a door that you don't want somebody to go out to. If you look at the doors around the room, they're very similar in color to the wall here. Somebody won't notice that that's a door. A door you want somebody to go into, painted a completely different color than the wall. So if you painted that door brown, somebody with dementia will say, okay, that's a door. I can go through that place to get to wherever I have to go. Um, we also recommend placing curtains on glass doors or decals something that will notify the person with dementia that it is a door, I can't go through it, I have to open it to go out because decals will, will alert them that there is something there. Glass, again, they see their reflection, they can get scared. So the decal will minimize some of that but also covering the, the door similar to what these are. If you cover the door completely, they won't know it's there and it will um, prevent them from going out. Reminders of going out. Remove your keys, all the little hanger that you used to have by the door that you hang your keys on to go out, remove that. If reminders of going out are removed, the person with dementia won't be needing to go out as much or hopefully won't be reminding to go out. These are wonderful products. You can buy them in Toys R Us, Babies R Us, Home Depot, Lowe's, anywhere. They're safety knobs. They come, usually they come in a great kit. They have the knobs, they now have them for lever handles as well as for knob handles. They have cabinet locks in them, plug locks, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. They're a wonderful thing to help you safety, um, safety proof your home. Windows. Escape artists are going to get out one way or the other. If they can't go through a door, they might go through a window. So there's limiting bars that you can put on a window to help minimize somebody from leaving through the window. Again, with the electrical cords, um, secure them to the floor, cover outlets with the, with the things because somebody with dementia will try to plug something in, but if there's a cover in it, A, they may not be able to see it, and B, they're not going to be able to put a plug into the outlet. We talk about smoke detectors and fire extinguishers. We very strongly recommend that there's smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors throughout your home. If you have a question as to where they are to go, you can call your local building department or fire department and they can help you um, place them correctly in your home and we tell you to make sure that the batteries are up and running. Another thing that we talk about is an escape plan in case there is a fire. How that person's going to get out. If you plan an escape plan and you practice it, and you practice it, and you practice it every day, every week, every month. 
it'll become part of their nature. So if an alarm goes off, they'll know that they have to do something, and if they've practiced it, they'll just go and do it. It almost will become rote. Um, we tell you to have a fire extinguisher nearby, but hide it so that somebody can't um, accidentally set it off. The kitchen. The kitchen is a wonderful place for a fire to start. And there's wonderful new products out here that help that not happen. One is a fire suppression system that fits right up and under your hood. So if the stove senses that there's a folk, uh, fire excuse me, and there's smoke coming up, it'll send the chemical down and put out the fire. Another is a timer that will turn off or it'll either be a it's either a timer or a sensor depending on the product that you get. So if you're standing in front of the stove and then you walk away and it's a, you're away from the stove for five minutes or ten minutes or twenty minutes, it'll shut the stove down. Or if it senses your body presence and it doesn't sense it anymore, it will shut the stove down. They have them for gas and electric stoves. We recommend that you unplug all of your small appliances, the microwaves, the coffee pot, things of that nature. <laughs> things that are going to take some function to be able to, to do, that somebody with dementia will either get very frustrated, do it wrong, or can potentially hurt them or somebody else. 